Hi everyone, today we are with Mette and Mette um, is a wonderful new human friend I have found in Sweden and she was in HR in the past and now she helps people find themselves um, they're in their journey they're, she helps them with that so Mitte, tell us your story how did you get where you are <laughs> where were you born uh, what kind of schooling did you get did you went to a boarding school you know mm. I don't know is that really interesting I don't know <laughs> for people who are very different than you it I, might be interesting mm, for them okay for me so, it is I grew up in, in Sweden uh, with my mom and dad and and uh, a sister uh, is three years older than I am uh, on the countryside uh, and we were uh, quite um, uh, we weren't really like normal like normal Swedish people um, <laughs> what's normal Swedish people yeah it's like a person with um, two cars a dog uh, like a Volvo car at least one uh, what else like living living in a box i would say to to me it's living in a in a box in an idea more than living your life uh, living your life from within uh, and that is to me my experience is that it's different for all of us i mean you live your life and that's different from my way of living what do you mean by living like you didn't grow up as a standard Swedish family? So you were poor, or you were very rich, or you were living on a boat, or you were living on a mansion? What was happening? I would say that we had a, a bit of everything. Uh, my mother's background is from a really rich family. With uh, We are related to uh, kings and queens, like really close in the background. Um, but she chose uh, a man because she was passionate in love with him, I, I think. Um, that was uh, so it's, uh, kind of a Romeo and Julia uh, set up. Uh, he was from working a working family uh, and uh, well, so um, they were living their lives in one way and as i grow up i started to also understand that they wasn't uh, in in different ways so um yeah uh, there are so many things to to tell you about that but um we we lived in the countryside uh, my mother was like growing uh, uh, our, our own vegetables and stuff and and uh, I would say knitting uh, sweaters clothes and that was really you know like quite strange to people around me my name is Mette and that is also like a really unusual name in Sweden uh, so I, I grew up with with this being like not like everyone else um, so people people's like ideas about that uh, their judgings and uh, I remember when I was like tired about this uh, so I came back home and I told my mom that now I am going to be popular so I was such a small kid and I understood that um, I was different and I was tired about that and I decided to, to be popular. Um, How did you do that? Put an ad in the newspaper? I want to be popular? Or? I, I started to uh, act and be like, because I, I have the seeing, so I quite fast understand how to be to to be a part of this group mm. or this this whatever um and that was like starting a journey about avoiding myself and, and not loving myself as i am 
Um, <laughs> mm, that took me somewhere to my 20s before I found myself having all these panic attacks, several of them, um, where I totally lost myself. The feeling was that I was like not me. Um, and with this understanding that that I had like like from I was a kid, I was in deep contact with like a bigger knowing of something. And that part of me was still there, like knocking on the door, like, Meta, what are you doing? <laughs> hmm. So on one hand, uh, I, it's been a truth to me that we should be who we are because that is always the best if we are things just start to, to happen around us that's my experience and that was like more like a feeling um, intuition yeah an intuition yes um but that i pushed away and like no because i have to be like this Hmm. I'll take a pause here and I will ask you to tell others who have this intuition inside them but they un they keep putting no 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 go away go away mm. it's not possible for me I can never do that what should they do how should they pamper the intuition and let it come out so to me it was uh, hmm. I, I feel a bit touched now. Um, to me it was about surviving actually. Um, because I was dead. <laughs> Your soul wise dead? Emotionally dead? Emotionally dead. I was uh, shut down uh, in my body. Um, I was living my life by a lot of ideas. Uh, and and uh, I mean, I, I started to collect all the ideas that I could see and I turned them into my truth and started to, to live uh, my life from that. And, and so I came to, to uh, like a, a certain point and, and I had several of those because this isn't like a quick fix. Okay, so once you wake up and then you're done, not to me in a way, it might be like that for, for some other people. But... Um, so the question I want to, to ask you is, um, do you want to live? Do you want to be alive? I understand how it is to, to not be alive. I've been there a quite long time, but I also now uh, know how to be alive and, you know, in and out, I, I sometimes shut down myself uh, and then my body reacts heavily with like shutting everything out uh, my, my functions like I I, I doesn't function mm. so to me it's pretty clear that I have to, to choose a living life to survive um, mm. Okay, so you go there and then uh, forward, let's go forward. So you, what did you study? Did you go to college, university? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, when I graduated, uh, when I was like 19, um, I was super happy because I was free. Mm -hmm. I was super, super happy. And nobody could control me anymore. Um, so I went for... Um, jobs. Uh, I tried this and that. Uh, I spent quite many years. Tell me what were the jobs? Um, the first one was uh, 
Telia 118, 118 is like uh, where you call and ask for, uh, I have a, an unknown number, who is this? And I was uh, looking that up and, and giving them the information. So that oh, was like... Telephone operator. Yeah, yeah. Second? Uh, that was like a storage uh, doing, I don't know, like packing things. Yeah, and then I went to Oslo in Norway, uh, working a bit more creative with um, uh, lunch, uh, lunch restaurants, uh, changing like every day or every week. You were the waitress, or what? Were you no, I was like preparing the food uh -huh. and, uh, and as a chef. Uh, not really, no, because they most eat uh, like bread and salad, uh, but but I. I enjoyed being creative there uh, and and uh, getting people's um, appreciation for for being creative with the food. Okay. Um, and then I worked many years at the um, airport, Landvet Airport outside Gothenburg in Sweden. As well. Um, I I started with um, taking care of um, like people who's in the need of a wheelchair which can be like old people, uh, disabled people. Um, and you were driving them around? Yes, yeah. Having beautiful conversations with people. Uh, and that has always been like a passion, uh, um, a passion you might say, uh, like human beings. I, I love people. Um, I like, love to feel people and feel the... the Aliveness, uh, and I. That was a part of the security. So uh, I also became a security guard, um, doing this and that with security questions. Also being in the security control, and they recruited me to the uh, fire fighter uh what do you say like a fire station uh, at the airport so mm -hmm. i was there and i was um in the uh, union quite like high up in in the uh, meetings there challenging the bosses to you know like open up actually <laughs> i'll take up i'll stop you here and mm. i'll ask you <clears throat> in our country uh kids and girls and boys both of them don't choose to work physical labor work uh, they don't try to become ever um, a waitress or they don't have summer jobs in school they don't they mm -hmm. don't do anything till they graduate the university mm -hmm. and that does not expose them to the real world that they don't have any context of the real world till they actually become a graduate and then they want to uh, get a car and a corner office and you know the dream mm. come true all of a sudden which doesn't happen mm. and then on top of that if they're a boy or a girl they're pressured into a marriage uh, because that's the right thing to do so um, what when you hear this mm. uh, what is your suggestion to them uh, what should they do the I mean you coming from a a very wealthy family and everything and doing pushing people around in the in the wheelchair mm -hmm. and uh, I would say that I I also had experience from from growing up that uh, but being really poor so I have both and uh, we didn't have a lot of money uh, in in my uh, time so uh, just to be clear about that but um, so it's always difficult to suggest someone else uh, anything really um, because we we have different backgrounds yes. different possibilities uh, growing up in sweden it, it is a, a difference from from being in pakistan um, i can guess um, if you don't have a suggestion that's fine yeah yeah. So so I, I think my, my only that I am always coming back to is to listen to uh what you self want and, and try to, to go with that. Yeah. Um and and don't believe the obstacles that you see because we we set up a lot of um 
um, obstacles and, and problems in our heads. That's how the human being, the mind, works out. So don't listen to that. Listen to, to your gut feeling, to your intuition. Uh, and uh, if you want to have a job before you graduate, go for it. Hmm. Okay, so now you're in the union, and now how did you end up into a corporate world as an HR person? Mm. So uh, while I was working at the airport, uh, I had one year at the university in Gothenburg as well, uh, studying uh, international relations, uh, conflict, how to handle conflicts, how to run projects, uh, work in big corporates. Uh, it was a quite interesting year. Um, and I, I travel quite much because I, I enjoy that, meeting different kind of people. So not like too much as a tourist, tourist, like looking at buildings that you can see on a, on a photo, but meeting the people. Mm. Um, and until I understood that this is not the place for, for me, it was not that creative um, place, people. It was like a really stuck structure. Um, so I decided to... <laughs> I met a woman named Jacqueline. Uh, I went to India uh, during these years and I fell in love with India, Indian people. Uh, the presence in the Indian people, I would say, and the presence in the country. Um, coming home from that, fell in love with life. That was what happened in myself. When I came back from that, I um, uh, I met this woman who has a ashram in, in uh, India uh, and she read my, she, she uh, what do you say, she read my horoscope. Um, and what I remember from that was that I should work with uh, more creative things uh, and also like more grounding things. I was, uh, you know, working at the airport. I have a lot of air in my, my horoscope, in my sign. Um, so I decided to, to uh, go and study again. And I choose a two-year uh, education. That is also uh, partly uh, where you practice. Uh, I think you have two periods uh, of practicing. You are searching, uh, like connecting with uh, companies where you want to, to go. So that's a part of the education. Um, and um, that was international sales and marketing. And that took me to, to a job uh, focusing on, on uh, well, first I, I was in this, um, this um, uh, international business. Uh, we went to, um, what do you say, Messur in Swedish, uh, like big places where uh, many uh, businesses... Exhibitions. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, so it was quite international touch, it was communicative, um, it was also focused on the result, a lot the performance. And after graduating from there, I worked as a salesperson on the phone. And I was uh, quite successful. I was one of the best there. I was really focused. What were you selling? Um, we worked with um, IT businesses, so it was different. Uh, and we most of the time we booked meetings um, for the indoor salespeople that we never met. We were like disconnected from the actual, um, from our customers in, in, uh, in one way. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot. I learned how to use my intuition. Uh, this seeing that I was telling you about before. And it's uh, that I understand people and know how to, to talk with them. And then I changed. <laughs> so I was there for half a year and I changed to a small headhunting company. And uh, I grow 
in, in this um, uh, field. Yeah, not 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 selling, but but that was more about you know recruiting people, headhunting people, helping people like my customers. Um, I was a consultant uh, and uh, helping them with um, understanding, you know, we are working with people and we want people to come here uh, and and uh, be happy here and stay here. So how do we do that? <clears throat> and that is employee branding to me, but I didn't realize it at the time, but employee branding became in the same time very, very popular in Sweden. And from there, I was um, recruited from one of my uh, clients. Uh, so I had like a, um, a position in that um, company, working both in Stockholm and Gothenburg, traveling every week uh, with recruitment, headhunting, search, uh, employee branding. Yeah. Um, and now <laughs> it starts the no. interesting part uh -huh. <laughs> in my life, I would say. Okay, you want to share that, or I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, you can ask. I was going to ask you if you got the lamp of Aladdin. What are the three wishes you will have? Ah. Mm. Oh, I want. I want this. Uh, So what comes is that the planet, but it is not uh, right. Um, I, I want us human beings on this planet to wake up. Wake up to a higher consciousness? Yes. Because okay. we are... Um, Number two. Okay, um, um, so what comes is um, okay, so I'm, I'm touching into if I actually want to share this um, and I'm not sure really so I, I start um, trying to, to explain it. Um, it's like for when I was a kid, and from since I was a kid, I I had this ability to to leave my body, uh, and it wasn't like you know a thing to me when I was a kid. It was just something that was there, uh, and there is like a huge pull when you ask me this question to uh, leave my body. Yeah, and and uh, I feel like really strong in my stomach and my my heart and, uh, and I'm actually uh, more because I'm I'm not that much in my body like, like I, I have this ability to leave my body all the time okay so that's the second and the third is mm, Yeah, okay, so that comes with the, the second, um, is to, to open up um, us human beings on this planet to um, uh, the rest of the universe, because we are big. Uh, and this might sound like really strange to some people, but that um, from the intuitive space, uh, this is the the answers to your questions. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm. Thank you so much for your time. Do you want to share something else? Last words? Mm. Uh, yeah, I want to say that I I work with um, totally different kind of things today, uh, and in the same time I have this experience, my background that you asked me about, and it's a part of me, uh, and um, 
but today I am into um, the explore, exploration of being uh, a human being and how to be that in a challenging world and I hold space for other people who are attracted in, in doing that to, to follow their guts, um, their intuition, the life in them and that is feels super important to me. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. So everybody who watched, uh, please share the video and please connect with her to uh, as I don't know if you felt it, but as she is very in, in tune with her soul and you can learn the same from her to to find yourself, to find your true north, to find your human being inside you, which is hiding, trying to come out and uh, you're not letting it happen. So once you let that happen, everything will start changing for you. God bless you. Bye bye.